Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, babies in their diapers, welcome to the Tiberia Show with your host, Tiberius Boy! That's me, Tiberius! Today, we're going to talk about some very awesome stuff. We have a video game about merging in the Middle Ages, a book about the power of prayer, and a dog, and we have a totally awesome guest. So we have the one, the only, the amazing, Ramsey Ruzar! What's up, Tiberius? What's up? And Ramsey is a TV host, director, producer, MC, and so much more. You know, it's a beautiful thing to be a part of your amazing platform, your show. Um, I've heard some incredible things about you as a radio host, Tiberius, and I can't wait to get down and diggy with this interview today. Hmm. Well, today we're going to start off with the video game of the week, and this is going to be a merge. <laughs> And now it's time for the Video Game of the Week. Today's video game is Merge Landia. This game is not on Roblox, but it is a game platform from Epic Games, and it is called Core. Oh, and guess what? Core is free! Gotta love that. So when I get into the game, you so I, select, I select it play. You are presented with a training level. This started out like most merging games. Merge two level ones to make a level two, two level twos to merge into a level three and so forth. So that means you would need eight level ones to make a four because you need eight of them. So that means four, four one, no, four twos, then you have two threes and then if you merge the two threes, then you get a four. So this means that the math is harder and harder as you get higher in merging. You can harvest coins from merged housing and harvest lumber from merged trees and get elementals from merging mana gems. Wait, this game sounds like there's a lot of moving parts type areas. I mean, I'm thinking to myself like, whoa, level one, level two, level three, level four, level eight, level 10. How many more levels are there, Tiberius? I don't know. I'm going <laughs> to find out. <laughs> so tell me more about this game. Well, there are a lot of levels. You can even merge training centers to build an army men to defeat the warlord blocking your level. I got my dad to try and he merged all the way to a level 16 unit. So if eight of them made a four, I can't do that right now. I'll have to do that later. I give Merge Landia 7 out of 10 stars because it's a lot of fun to merge early on, but later on, the levels are a lot harder and more complicated to pass. Sometimes you have to delete a good unit to have room to merge a unit that you need first. I agree. There's a lot to this game, and I'm like, in my head, I'm like, can this guy who is bald underneath his hat catch up with your dad getting to level 16? Because in my mind, I'm like, oh my god, somebody help me, please. Oak Ridge Gun Range is a family oriented shooting range that has been in business for over 30 years. They specialize in basic firearm training and offer numerous services such as consignments, gun trades, gunsmithing, and concealed weapon classes. I even got my training for gun safety at Oak Ridge Gun Range. Great customer service and firearm safety is what they do best. So find out more at oakridgegunrange.com. And now it's time for the book of the week, Sacha's Healings and Miracles, a true story about Sacha. This book is written by G.W. Tolley. Let me read to the back of the book. In fact, Ramsey, would you like to do the honors? Uh, sure. Let me see. Let me see here. Sasha, Healings and Miracles. When Sasha was a baby, she was so small and had to have breathing treatment. Growing up, she had to have several surgeries and had a life-threatening situation. God is the greatest healer in performing and performing miracles. Well, thank you. And this is not an AR book, so you don't get any points for reading it. So, as you might know, J.W. Tolley, he was on my radio show last week. He 
talked about his TV show and worked with publishing books. Well, this is one of the books that he had made and published himself. What, what is this book for? Well, it is a reminder about God's greatness and how powerful prayer can be. At first, GW got Satya, but she was so small but had breathing problems. GW prayed for healing, and then after a visit with the doctor, she was healthy and strong. Later, she got sick again, and GW prayed again for healing, and Satya got better again the next day. But then there was a really bad bacteria infection, and GW told God to do his will and that Satya is his. Well, the very next day, the doctor was surprised because Satya was all better in one day, and the doctor said that they did not have a cure. Oh, wow. Which is very cool. I give Satya healings and miracles 9 out of 10 stars because I really like that doctors could not understand how Satya was healed just with the power of prayer. Wow, that's an amazing story to see how, in the process, Sasha gets healed. What an amazing book. The Tiberia Show would like to thank one of their dedicated sponsors, Custom Designs Orlando. These guys are on Mills Avenue and do all sorts of stuff, ranging from photo ID badges, engraved signs, custom braille ADA signs, vinyl lettering to trophies and awards. The cool part about Custom Designs is they can ship products all over the United States. You can reach them at 407-898-0373 and tell them that Tiberius sent you. And now it's time for the book of the week, Sacha's Healings and Miracles, a true story about Sacha. This book is written by G.W. Tolley. Let me read to the back of the book. In fact, Ramsey, would you like to do the honors? Uh, sure. Let me see. Let me see here. Sasha, healings and miracles. When Sasha was a baby, she was so small and had to have breathing treatment. Growing up, she had to have several surgeries and had a life-threatening situation. God is the greatest healer in performing and performing miracles. Well, thank you. And this is not an AR book, so you don't get any points for reading it. So, as you might know, J.W. Tolley, he was on my radio show last week. He talked about his radio TV show and worked with publishing books. Well, this is one of the books that he had made and published himself. What, what is this book for? Well, it is a reminder about God's greatness and how powerful prayer can be. At first, G.W. got Satya, but she was so small but had breathing problems. G.W. prayed for healing, and then after a visit with the doctor, she was healthy and strong. Later, she got sick again, and G.W. prayed again for healing, and Satya got better again the next day. But then there was a really bad bacteria infection, and G.W. told God to do his will, and that Satya is his. Well, the very next day, the doctor was surprised because Sasha was all better in one day. And the doctor said that they did not have a cure. Oh, wow. Which is very cool. I give Sasha healings and miracles 9 out of 10 stars because I really like that doctors could not understand how Sasha was healed just with the power of prayer. Wow, that's an amazing story to see how, in the process, Sasha gets healed. Mm -hmm. What an amazing book. And now it's time for the interview of an interesting person. Today's test is going to be so much fun. Today we have the one, the only, the amazing, Ramsey Ruzard! Woo! I am here, I am here, I am here on the Tiberius Show. Woo! Ramsey is a TV host, director, producer, MC, and so much more. Well, you know, I do do a lot, Tiberius, and I'm so excited to be here in this amazing studio today to uh, be on your station and be a part of your show and, and really talk about some interesting things that you want to learn more about the amazing Ramsey Rizard. Mm -hmm. So first off, how about you enjoying being on the show? Well, I love it. It's, it's an experience in itself. You know, anytime I'm in a different room uh, besides the room I'm in doing my show, you know, it's always a pleasure because I'm able to serve someone else's vision and be a part of that moment and really get to hear a little bit more reflections about myself through the lives of other people. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have to ask, you have listed so many jobs that you do. Which is the job that you enjoy the most? I think directing is one of the jobs I enjoy the most because, you know, 
I'm big about imagination, you know, and, and for me as a creative entrepreneur, when I'm directing something, I'm able to take a vision or an idea and bring it to life and actually put the work at doing it and being able to allow other people to use their gift to work together as a team. Because like they say, a teamwork makes the dream work. So bringing people together collectively and being able to uh, bring out the vision that uh, I see in my head or or someone may see in their head or whether it's a small business or documentary or movie but I just love the fact that in directing I have the ability to really bring out the best of other people and the vision okay well now you run a company called In The Mirror. Yeah. Can you tell me more about that? So In The Mirror is an entertainment and film company uh, where we provide as far as services from emceeing to filming. We do a lot of documentary promos for small businesses. And then on the entertainment side, we provide a lot of emcees uh, for corporate events and weddings. And then also uh, red carpet services, one of our main products that we push uh, during cocktail hour or uh, before the event begin so that we can capture the highlights of the guests that's there and talking about their experience of the entire event and stuff okay what got you interested in the film and entertainment industry you know it's, it's interesting entertainment i've i've been i've i think i've been connected into that industry since i came out of my mother's womb um as a young child from loving music and stuff but the film industry is pretty interesting my father's death is what birthed um the film part of what i do uh you know it's just a vision that god gave me in the room when he was taking his last breath you know it was a vision of a tree and that tree uh, had leaves on it and I know God was telling me that if this leaf would have to stay any longer it wouldn't be able to and it wouldn't be able to produce anything uh, healthy and that leaf fell down in the vision and the new leaf that came forth actually had fruit on it and God said that you are the new leaf what are you going to produce for your generation to eat that's healthy and that's what the whole the reflection show and all that stuff came about uh, because this, it's all it's it's more than me so going into film it's it's really one of my purpose because it has nothing to do with me I didn't go to school for it I don't have a degree in it it's something literally that the Holy Spirit gave me the ability and the gift within myself to see that I'm able to do something as powerful as film and I've been doing it ever since 20 uh, 2017 cool well does it take a lot of formal training to be on TV in front of cameras you know I believe you know it should never take formal training. It should take formal confidence, right? About you, about you being you. Right? The one thing the camera does it it exposes who you really are. You know, from your posture to how you articulate to how you carry conversations or to how you act or move. Um, for me, it's more just it's more about who you are, right? Um, I don't go in front of the camera and try to portray someone I am not. I mean, everybody is always, their minds are always blown when they meet me in person. Like, oh my God, um, we were we were assuming you would be a certain way. And I'm like, no, the, I'm, the camera is there to capture what it needs to capture. But I'm there to speak about the things that need to be spoken about. And that's a beautiful thing about what I do, you know? Huh, cool. Well, what was the most interesting thing that you learned from all the projects that you have worked on? The most interesting thing I've learned, I've learned myself. Um, I've learned my weakness. I've learned my strength. But I've also learned about, you know, the great people that I have around me, you know, uh, that helps me to be who I am. I mean, you have the great Will Morris, who's I consider him one of my branding coach. Um, that's actually branded my logo, colors. Every conversation I want to run by, go by Will Morris. Um, and then also, you know, just being around like-minded individual creatives, you know, uh, work, being able to partner and work out of uh, E-Studios. You have Alex McCullough. You got Jim uh, McMell. You know, you have some amazing people that, that has came upon this opportunity and been able to help me to become the person I am today in film, my show, and what I do. So I love what I do. I have learned a lot in who I am, and it literally exposes the best, best version of myself. Huh. Well, which of all your jobs is the hardest to do, and why? I would say the hardest job is film, um, because once again, um, you know, your purpose causes you to serve other people. Your purpose is not about you, and film is literally, it causes me to die every day. I got to wake up every day and make that decision to do this for someone else who needs the very thing that that God has blessed me to bring to life so and you know it, it also allows me to understand that I'm not in this thing alone 
So when it comes to what I do, man, film is the hardest thing. Like literally, I got to continue to learn. The industry is always growing new cameras, um, uh, a new terminology that you got to learn, the business of film you got to learn, how to market yourself, how to brand yourself, how to create yourself uh, uh, in a market that seems to have no niche. But there is a niche. You got to learn how to brand yourself, build yourself, create yourself, and allow other people to see what you do. So that's an industry that literally I fight every day, but that fighting only makes me better because it's never about me. Okay. Well, what is the best part about working in the entertainment industry? The best part about working in the entertainment industry is that you're never bored. Um, you're always having fun. You know, one day it's music, next day it's filming, next day it's writing, next day it's networking, next day it's, it's just like now. I mean, the entertainment industry, if it wasn't for me being able to be in this industry, I would have never met you or been on your show. So it allows you to connect with like-minded individuals and, and, and be able to have conversations that that's out of the box to other people. But to us, it's in our community. We are out of the box thinkers. So we move differently. We dream differently. We work differently. We breathe differently. We talk differently because in our industry, we always are in the process of creating something new. I, that's something I would say is fun about being in the entertainment industry. You never get bored. Okay. Well, I run a radio show and podcast that talks about God during my Lions Drive segment. How do you include God's message in the projects that you work on? You know, it's amazing. I believe God is in every story. And we all go through the process of, of, of life. And the interesting thing is whenever I'm behind the scenes or, or I'm talking with individuals on set, um, and they begin to ask me, man, there's something different about who you are. And I get a chance to share my faith with them. You know, I love the fact that in scripture that Jesus broke bread with the disciples. And with him, with him breaking bread with the disciples just showed that he cared for them. You know, it, mm -hmm. it was it was all about him communicating to them and, okay. and seeing what their needs are. And I think the opportunity of being in this industry and what I do, it gives me a chance to be in the room and be able to have that moment of breaking the bread with them and that's how i pretty much uh, uh, uh gear my relationship toward with god towards other people you know it's not forceful it's all about loving choosing making the decision and communicating and having that conversation with other people who needs to hear something inspiring hopeful in that moment mm -hmm. well i see that you have a show on pbs called the reflection show can you tell me more about that? Yeah, it's pretty It's pretty dope. Um, you know, I have something called Triumph Tuesday um, that's on WCF TV PBS. Uh, it's actually a bumper, and what they've done is they've taken the platform of my show and they place it uh, within other shows so that other people can begin to see uh, the platform of what I bring to the table as far as uh, hope. You know, the world, Tiberius, needs hope. You know, with all the things that are happening in this world, what the world needs is hope and that's what it's all about for PBS and it's a beautiful relationship okay. and I'm grateful for it. Well, what is the show all about? As far as which one? The, the Triumph Tuesday segment or the actual The Reflection Show? The actual. So The Reflection Show, it's all about impacting, inspiring and, and influencing other people through other people's stories. Um, see, you and I have a story, right? And the cool thing is we learn about each other through each other's story. If you don't share your story to me, how do I know the depths of your character or who you are? And the Reflection Show gives you an opportunity to share your story so that you may reflect on your past, your present, and your future. And in our future together, we build a healthy relationship. The audience build a healthy relationship with you. And you have a chance to really grow from your past and embrace your future because your present is the opportunity you get to reflect and talk about your journey. Okay. No, I have a dad that finds me tons of guests. He asks like everyone. So how do you find the people that you want to interview on your show? It's amazing. As people begin to watch the show and they begin to share it uh, through their Facebook, wherever uh, platform they're sharing it, they are always um, telling their friends, I think you should submit your story. I think you should do this. I think you should do that. And then I also have friends who will call and say, hey, I think you need to interview this person uh, because uh, their story it aligns with the culture, what you're talking about, the brand of, 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 of your platform. I think you should. So all my friends or, or, or I would say a certain group of people on social media, people get a chance to literally um, send uh, guests over to my platform. Well, where do you get the ideas of what to talk about on the show? 
Uh, pretty much my show is Holy Spirit led. Um, I My guests don't get any questions. It's really conversations. I think we got to start bringing back authentic conversations on uh, national television, uh, being able to see people for who they are so that people can make better judgment of that person and also meet that person where they are in that season. And for me, seasons are moments. It's not summer, spring, fall. It's moments for me because every decision comes with a season. So that's how I look at it. Mm, okay. So on the TV show, do you have like a full studio and set or are you using cell phones and mob cameras like I do? Well, I actually, I do use uh, cameras and I'm on set at East Studios, which is in Winter, Winter Garden, um, downtown Winter Garden area. So I'm always shooting Tuesdays and Thursdays using uh, real life cameras uh, all through post-production and, and, you know, just making sure I give uh, the Reflection Show family the best quality of, of work that they deserve as they are, you know, being entertained by the stories. Okay. Well, what is the one episode that you're most proud of? The one episode, episode that I'm most proud of, um, uh, that's a good question. Let me see. You know, um, I would probably say Let's see here. You know, I interviewed this young lady in Atlanta. I think I'm proud of that episode more than anything because stepping outside of the box and to be able to see her live her dream and be able to speak about her dream on a platform that all started off with a cell phone and to see that how excited she was. She came down all the way from Atlanta and she paid for her own flight paid for her own hotel just to just to be on the reflection show i think that meant more to me than anything else because you know you have someone who's willing to invest into their dream to be a part of someone else's dream and that someone else's dream is giving that person who's invested into their dream to promote their dream and i think that's the beauty of that show that i did with ria janae who is a celebrity fashion designer out of atlanta georgia huh, cool well now you're about to say you're a producer director editor and writer what is the biggest difference between the jobs? Well, as a producer, you're finding everybody for the job. <laughs> as a director, you are staging, you are positioning everything. As a writer, uh, you are definitely creating the content, uh, bringing structure and, and creating the foundation for it. Uh, and then as an MC, you're talking about being a host at event, corporate events, uh, weddings, uh, baby showers, um, all those good things, creating an atmosphere to where everyone else can be a part of a vision of our clients. So um, that's all the difference with every job. But the cool thing about all of them is the fact that they all lead into entertainment. Okay. Well, does it make it easier to do more than one of the jobs in the same project? You know, it does. When I did the documentary for WCF TV PBS, uh, uh, Beyond the Four Walls for the Black Church, um, you know, I was able to do, I was able to play so many different roles. And the cool thing is the fact that it didn't feel like any of them were, were different, but they were different. If you take a look back at everything, as far as the processes there, the each each position has in place is different from each other. But someone great can make everything looks like it's easy because how they maneuver around all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, what is the one thing that you want my listeners to know about what it is like to be doing so many jobs? You know, there's one thing I would tell your listeners is I, I know people say, you know, as far as like, you know, um, if you're doing all these things, how are you mastering one, right? Um, for me, I believe that you master one by doing all the right things in what you're called to do. And if your listeners, while they're listening, I want you to listen to this thing very, very much so, um, that you were born to work, you were born to become, and you were born to create. And there's going to be a lot of experiences that you face in life that you're going to need everything that you're going through. You're going to need all of those missing puzzles to come together to create the beautiful vision or picture that you see for your future. Mm -hmm. Well, what is the hardest part about being in the film industry? I think the hardest part is, um, I would say this, is making sure that you're not ending up in the wrong relationships. You know, relationship is the most valuable thing. 
And if you're desperate to be in the film industry, if you're desperate to do certain things, you can put yourself or you can be married to people who don't carry the same principles as you. And it's important that you carry, you have principles and morals and good character so that you can base the proper judgment on the relationships you're building so that you don't have to fall into this type of questions was the hardest part about being in the film industry, you know? <laughs> well, if you could think of one thing that would make your job easier, what would it be? Um, you know, I would say this. One thing that would make my job easier, resources, money, uh, finances. Uh, it, it is the key thing, you know. You can't just fund a dream just by breathing. Um, you can live a dream by breathing, but you can't fund a dream by just breathing. Um, finances and resources are key. You know, you need relationship, you need money, and you need the right, the right healthy opportunities to help you do your assignment well, great, and good. Well, the craziest situation that you've run into while doing your work? The craziest situation I ran into literally was, I remember when I was getting doing the uh, uh, um, the documentary for WCF PBS, Beyond the Four Walls. I only had three weeks to finish that project. And, you know, that was crazy for me. Because you're talking about three weeks, no sleep, producing a documentary at that high level um, for a platform that's well-respected. And um, I made sure my team didn't get no sleep, but they got paid for it, you know. And uh, it was a blessing to be a part of that moment. It was scary. It was amazing. But I would not take that moment back at all. I would actually want to do that moment again because the adrenaline was so dope. Huh. Well, what was the first job that you ever had? My first job I ever had, I would probably say on paper, right? you saying on paper? Duggars? On paper? Okay. I just want to make sure you and I were on the same page. On paper. Okay, I would say uh, my first job was Win Dixie. I was a bag boy. I mean, I was getting paid five dollars and fifteen cents. Can you imagine five dollars and fifteen cents? And I was bagging uh, people groceries, and I was bringing in the carts in that hot weather, humidity just slapping me in my face, and I'm like, oh my goodness, can I just get some help? But yeah, that was my first job, $5.15 bagging, literally, people groceries. Well, did that help you out to be a better TV host? You know what? It did because it taught me two things. It taught me how to be humble. It taught me how to serve. And guess what? It taught me how to always work hard with everything that your hands are blessed to touch. Well, that's three things. <laughs> You know, my mother inspires me. You know, every day I wake up, I think about that beautiful queen. Um, she she worked in the field for over 18 years to provide for six kids. Uh, she, she picked up tomatoes, oranges, and all for like $4.30, probably less than that. Um, you know, she, she woke up every day. She didn't complain not one bit. All she knew as a little girl uh, coming from Haiti was one day she would that airplane that was flying over her head in Haiti as a young girl, that one day she would be on that plane coming to America to be able to provide a dream for her children. And she did just that. You know, she sacrificed her life and she continues to sacrifice her life so that we can be the very dream that could retire her future. So, yeah, she inspires me a lot. Cool. Well, what advice would you give my listeners if they wanted to grow up and work in the entertainment industry? Never sell your soul. Don't sell yourself short. And always build a healthy relationship. Because healthy relationship is is what's going to keep you in the game. Okay. Well, if you could go back 10 years and tell yourself something, what would it be? Ramsey, read. Read, 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 and be consistent. And never give up. If it doesn't work the first time, just keep going at it. Okay. Well, what was the biggest mistake you ever made and how did it change you as a person? Um, you know, I don't believe in making mistakes as far as like hurting me. I, I, I look at mistakes like opportunities, you know, um, and the reason being is because everything that we go through in life teaches us something about the way we think, how we move, how we communicate, how we carry conversations and how we deal with people. So for me, I've learned so much about myself just through these life experiences. That's why my slogan for my show and my company is literally, your experience matters. Because I don't have any expectation towards people. For me, it's I'm gonna take what's been given to me and I'm gonna make my healthy decision out of it. Mm -hmm. So 
when you're not working, what do you do for fun? When I'm not working, what do I do for fun? Um, you know, I am an animated individual person, so uh, I'd probably be watching TV, a movie, just to get some tips. Um, or writing music. I love music. Um, that's my first love. Um, and at the same time, I spend a lot of time with my wife. Um, or I'll probably see the family. I'm a family guy. So, you know, yeah. Or I call Will Morris and I just bother the heck out of him until until he says, all right, Ram, get off my phone. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you play video games? And if you do, what's your favorite one? Uh, no, I, I don't play video games. Why? You know, Ever since I was a child, um, I never had the opportunity to really get into video games. I mean, I had Nintendo 64. Well, what about I had, on your phone? Uh, no, because for me, I just look at things that are going to... I'm, I'm more of a driven person when it comes to I need to be doing what I feel like is going to push me further and what I have going on. So during the time, if I have a little break, I'm studying somebody else that, that is doing better than me in, in the film industry or in music. I'm just learning how to master my craft. Okay. Okay, so what is your favorite book to read? Uh, one of my favorite books I love to read that I read every day literally is the Bible because I just love the story. I'm a story guy, so mm, okay. I love the stories in the Bible because when I read the Bible, even in Genesis, I think about the dinosaurs. I think about the lakes, the mountains. I think about all these beautiful things and it really takes me in into that uh, uh, into my imagination, literally. Okay. Okay, okay. Now can you tell me that one story? You know, remember, this is a kid's show, but that one story, well, that you're not supposed to tell me about. Come on, you can tell me. You know, um, I'll tell you this. When I was a little kid, my mother, remember, she worked a lot just to provide for all of us. We were doing some things that we should have never ever done ever ever before and I'm gonna tell you only on your show okay what we did we we literally after we got done watching Superman or Power Rangers we got a towel we tied it around our neck and we climbed the top of the roof of the house and we flew off of the roof thinking that we were going to do what Superman was doing and thank God we didn't break our leg because that day our mother would literally would have put us in timeout for the rest of our lives. I probably would still been in timeout now, but she still doesn't know that story. Wow. Can you imagine that? Yeah. Would you do something like that? No. <laughs> I mean, I would because we have a pool in our backyard, but... <laughs> oh, man. But is there anything else you think my listeners should know about you? Um, I'm, yeah, your listeners should know that I'm calm, I'm collective, I'm lying, I am weird, I am crazy, I'm very energetic, I got a crazy personality, and yes, you better check out The Reflection Show, and yes, you better subscribe to The Tiberius Show on his website, and yes, you better show him some love. Well, do you have a Facebook for my listeners who want to follow you? Well, yes, definitely follow The Reflection Show on Facebook. And also, you can follow it on Instagram and subscribe to the YouTube channel and the Mirror TV. And I got some great things coming out in the future of 2022. So I'm looking forward to The Reflection Show! Woo! Well, what is that one question that you think I forgot to ask you? Do you know? You forgot to ask me. You really forgot me to ask, ask me this question. What is underneath my hat? Why do I wear a hat? Why do you wear a hat? Well, a hat, since I can't grow no hair, this is the only, this is the only thing that's closest to getting hair, uh, to carrying a style. So I'm bald-headed, Tiberius, okay? So I wear this hat specifically because I'm bald, it makes me look good, and I feel like I have hair with it. Cool. Well, thank you, Ramsey, for being my special guest. Can you stick around for Mouth Corners? Yes, thank you for having me on your show. And once again, if you're not following The Tiberius Show, go to his website, www.thetiberiusshow.com. This kid has a lot to rumble. Midstate Fire has been providing top quality fire equipment services for three generations to the Central Florida area. Don't wait for an emergency to repair. Call Midstate Fire today at 407 407- 246-8855. Get your fire extinguishers and emergency lighting for both your home and businesses by visiting www.midstatefire.co.
Amazon. That number again is 407-246-8855. Tiberius' favorite subject, it's Math Corners! Thank you, Ramsey, for helping me with math corners. Today, we're going to talk about turning decimals into mixed numbers. Wait, we're going to talk about turning decimals into mixed numbers? Yes. Okay, help me help me with this. Come on, Tigers. Okay, so I've been doing my IXL.com math exercises, and we got into decimals with mixed numbers. This is a way to turn a decimal into a mixed number. So we can see it as a fraction and do different kinds of math with it. So let's say we have 3.25 as our decimal number. First off, you deal with any whole numbers. This is the numbers that are to the left of the decimal point. Mm -hmm. That is written down first, so you write down the 3. Then, you rewrite the decimal as a fraction, like 0.25 over 1. Since the 0.25 is in the hundredth place, you can multiply by 100 and then get 25 over 100. Now you can simplify the fraction to its lowest form, which can be divided by 25, mm. which is 1 over 4. Mm. Now you can use the 3 and 1 over 4 in a fraction problem. So let's try one more. 6.89. So you start with the whole number and you write down the 6. Mm -hmm. Then you take the 89 and times it by 100, mm -hmm. making it 89 over 100, and then you simplify. Mm -hmm. Since it is already simplified, because 89 is a prime number, that is 6 and 89 over 100. Hmm. So, Ramsey, do you not know how to take decimals and convert it into a mixed number? You know, um, I think I graduated high school in 2007. Um, so, well, I would well. probably take uh, multiple choice um, uh, A. That means, help me to understand how to make that happen, Tiberius. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Ramsey, for your help with Math Corners. See, David Smith, law.com. You can call him at 407-801-2667. Wait, you are not Chuck. My dad can help when people get hurt. He loves to help people. If you are ever injured at work or in a car accident, you should call my friend Chuck. You can call him at 407-801-2667. That website again is cwsmithlaw.com. Offices, Orlando. Does it actually have that much W's? <laughs> As you know, we talk about the qualities of living by the heart of a lion, which stands for leadership, integrity, obedience, and nobility. <laughs> this week, we're going to talk about obedience. For me, I think obedience is being fully committed to doing what is pleasing to God. The qualities of obedience are compliance with a good attitude and respect for the laws. You know when someone is obedient when they follow instructions willingly and thoroughly. I am working on active listening so that I can be sure to not miss instructions when they are provided by my teachers and coaches. I work on paying attention so that I can fully understand the instructions that I am receiving. This way, I am able to accomplish the task at hand and ensure our entire team wins. So, Ramsey, did you see or use obedience at all this week? I think I think I use it every day. Uh, you know, with what I do as far as um, what God has blessed me to have, and what and as far as managing, uh, I have to be obedient. I have to listen and see where He wants me to go, who He wants me to partner with, and as far as the vision. Um, what does he want me to complete as far as the assignment for that day? Okay. Well, of all of the heart of a lion virtues, which is your favorite? I would say leadership. Um, you know, leadership is huge because in order to lead people, you, you got to know how to serve people, right? Mm -hmm. um, so for me, I, I would definitely choose leadership because I'm all about serving others. And that's what you learned at the Win Dixie, right? Yep. Huh. We should always try to be lion strong in everything we do. Thank you. And that's our show, folks. I want to thank the one, one, the only, the amazing Ramsey Rizard for being on my show. It has been so much fun talking with you today, and I hope in the future that I will be able to visit your studio one time. Yes.
guest. So definitely got to get you on uh, the show and talk about your story and this radio, amazing radio show, the Tiberius Show. Also, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at the Tiberius Show. And please be sure to visit the Tiberius Show on YouTube and subscribe. Also, be sure to listen to us next week on the Tiberius Show. With your host, Tiberius Boy. The Tiberius Show is not filmed in front of a live studio audience. Executive producer Joseph Boy. Production editor Pierre Laguerre. Green Room manager Danny Boy. And your program host. Tiberius Boy! The Tiberius Show is copyright 2018.